I've got all kinds of people telling me different things. Oh, this is it. This is it. It's it's a demon. You know, oh, it's a shadow figure. Oh, it's a uh, Jen. Oh, it's, you know, oh. Yeah, this ball. Yeah. I've been listening and I keep hearing every now and again. I keep hearing something and I'm just trying to, I don't want to, I don't want, just want to see what comes so we can go back over it. People go in there nonstop wanting to get that capture. These spirits aren't stupid. All right, yeah. they know people's intentions. Sometimes I get really nasty messages sent to me that I'm just exploiting these spirits, you know. And, you know, you're just exploiting them. You're not even helping them, you know. You need to guide them into the light. Okay, well, I asked these spirits about the light, all right, and a spirit came back and said that's horse shit. Okay, there he is in the window again. Went under the bed. That goes off like that in every part of your house now. Welcome, Paro Peeps, to our Paranormal Now special. Myself, Richard Oliver, and Jared Walters invited Kent Burris from the YouTube channel The Ghosts of Carmel, Maine, to join us and tell us his story into what can only be described as one of the most incredible and terrifying paranormal investigations ever documented on Earth. This is what Kent had to say. It's not about the money, and I don't, and it's not about the numbers. You know, I don't, not once, you can look at all the videos, not once have I asked anybody to subscribe. <laughs> That's when you know these captures are very real. When you have to slow your recording down 150 to 200 percent to hear them in our time, that's that's when you know this is this is no doubt real. I mean, that's when you know these spirits are real. You know, and I've learned that they are not in the same time realm as we're in. Oh yeah, there's been people that's come to the lamp house and these spirits did not like them. I mean, they wanted, they cussed them out, told them off because they were asking the wrong questions and they were annoying the spirits. And I said, I tell people, you come into this house, do not provoke these spirits. All right, number one, do not provoke them. You know, if you're here to see how real this is, you know, make sure you don't provoke them because you will get a response, but it's not gonna be the response you want. They will cuss you out. They will tell you to leave, and that's the only response you're going to get. Um, you know, it's just like, you know, people say, well, you need to get a medium in there. And what people don't realize, I have brought mediums in here. Yeah. yeah no. You know, I mean, one medium came in here, a young female, and all of a sudden the activity picked up, and we heard a disembodied voice. And I turned around to look at her to ask her if she heard that voice, and she wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, where is she? <laughs> she was gone. <laughs> I never saw her again. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I tell these people, look, all right, you may hear voices in your head. You know, you may think you talk to spirits in your head, but when you come to the lab house, they're going to get in your face and say something. Yeah. Right? So be, be prepared for that. You know, in yeah. Port Terra, in one of the investigations, I think it was um, Encounters at the Lamb House Part 2, the blonde <laughs> lady that came to the house, and she says that she talks with spirits and that she communicates with them. And they came all the way from Utah to come to the house. They drove all that way, but I told them, I said, well, just keep in mind, you know, you don't have to worry about hearing them in your head. You will hear them face to face. Yeah. All right. So, and I said, have you ever heard them face to face before? And she goes, I think I have. But anyway, 
she was she was going down the steps. <laughs> and I'm this, I should, I should yeah, it's not funny, but I, it wasn't <laughs> funny then, but it is now. Because I'm like, welcome to the lamb house. <laughs> <laughs> She was going down the steps, and this, this spirit gets right in her face and says, help me, right in her face. <laughs> she was so petrified, her husband had to help her down the steps. <laughs> and the poor girl had quit smoking, and that, that she went out there and picked up another cigarette. You know, she, the quit smoking thing was over with. <laughs> You know, and I'm like, welcome to the party, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys, I have seen so much funny stuff. I mean, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. People's I reactions, imagine. I mean, they come into this house, and I know what they're going to face, and I put the camera on their face just to get their expressions. <laughs> I mean, Frost, you guys, <laughs> King Frost, Frostmere, do you guys know who he is? No. No. King Frost, um, he does, he's kind of like a Nuke's Top 5. In, oh, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. King okay, Frost yes. mirror. So yeah. he he flew in here, he came from, you know, he's in Germany and he flew here and, and you know, he came to investigate the house. And we had a, like a fun three or four days together. But <laughs> when we were in that basement, I just got a kick out of the look on his face. <laughs> I'm sorry, but he, he looked like a scared little child that just thought there was a monster under his bed. <laughs> it seems like this is more active in the daytime for some reason. Well, he pulled us upstairs so that Melissa was down here. So she's down here, which I don't know where she is because I caught her voice. Mm -hmm. Are you here? You getting movement? Melissa, honey. No, but there's nothing there. No, it looks like a face. Can you say hello? Yeah. I'm not getting it on mine, but you're getting it on yours. You getting movement? No, there's a face on the wall. If anybody's there, one more down. Can you break the light? Somebody wants to say hello. There's a face on the wall. That's creepy. Okay. okay, we're going to try a ghost box session. Anybody that's down here, move in front of the light anytime you want. And we'll be able to see your shadow. And we'll be able to see your shadow. Because it's pure energy, it's light. And when it's a laser beam, it's even stronger. A question I'd like to ask is with Shadow Dude. Because the, the, obviously the badge of Ghosts of Karma Main is when you're filming in through the window. Yeah. That must be just to sit there and and have that interaction. Must be something, Ken. I mean, that's got to be. I mean, that's. I, I, I can't imagine that's easy to put into words, but I mean, to, to watch it. Yeah. And for you to just be like, yo! Shadow Dude! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to, to have that much of an interaction, and I was like, I was watching it, and I was just dumbfounded. Whoa. 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 Shadow Dude, right, is the one I'm, I'm probably most curious about. Because it's almost like, and I don't know if I'm on the right line here, Ken, right, but it's almost like whatever spirit that is, it's like they're a bit, when, when they were alive, they were almost disabled mm -hmm. and I think because you get that energy where it's like like you said they didn't they didn't mean to stand in and scare you right they were just they're just going about 
their life. It's almost like I get that you get that vibe. Like it's almost it's so innocent. Yeah. You know, it's it's just like it's like it's like an accidental thing. I think that's why it's so unique. How fast it fascinates me. It's fascinating. This story, your story has, yeah, has fascinated me. To this day I really don't understand what kind of spirit shadow dude actually is. Um, you know, there's people that said, well, they debunked shadow dude because they showed that it had a colored hand on the bed. So that's not a shadow apparition. Well, I never said shadow dude is a shadow apparition. No, it's just what you, you know, calling. back in the day, I didn't know what to call him. He looked dark on the recording. So I just called him shadow dude. I mean, what else am I supposed to refer to him as? I mean, what do you exactly. call him? You know, yeah. so I never claimed he was a shadow apparition. But it's um, his head. It's his, you know, the sheet is like, it's quite large. Yeah. And it's like, I think, I, I don't know, I just get the sense that it was, whatever, whoever it was, they were, they were disabled. That's, that's the vibe I get. And they were like, you know, looking out of that window and, and being in that bedroom, they were looking at the world outside. They couldn't interact with and I think your presence there, I, it just seems like your energy is the kind of energy to not look at someone with a disability and judge them on it. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I think, you know, that, that that says a lot for what you've gone through, is that interaction. It's almost like he's, he's just, he's there in a, looking out to the world and, and, and observing the world himself like you're observing him. Shadow dude, where have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. Wish we can talk. Trying to say something? Wow. Shadow Dude, what's your name? I can testify to that because <clears throat> I'm a lot more outward than I used to be. But I'm actually registered blind, so I have very limited vision. Um, you know, to do this and just I a lot of time is I've gone on when I interact with people, just my senses, just my 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 gut feeling then, and I I, I get the same sense off off you to be honest. I get that kind of almost like a, a, a sense of I f would feel safe spending time with you then, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, hey, thanks. Yeah. People go along for the ride. And look at these and learn as I'm learning. Yeah, absolutely. they're experiencing things as I experience them. This is why you don't, sh I don't throw any fluff into it, you know, like music and sound yeah. effects, you know, during the investigations. I'll put music in during narrations or openers or closers, or, you know, something like that, but I don't put scary music in it while I'm walking through the house, you know, and all of a sudden. You know, boom, you know, you hear loud music going off because there's an encounter. This is not entertainment, all right? And there's people that said, oh, you know what? He's just exploiting these spirits or he's just in it for the money. Well, you know what? The YouTube channel is not even monetized. Yeah. You know, I haven't even monetized it. It's not about the money. And I don't, and it's not about the numbers. You know, I don't. Not once, you can look at all the videos, not once have I asked anybody to subscribe. Yeah. Not once. I mean, you know, if they want to subscribe, fine. If they don't, fine. I mean, that's that's not why I'm in this. I'm in this to study the paranormal, to get an understanding of what's going on and what this is all about. Yeah. And in my opinion, it's educational. If Absolutely. with my now editing skills i mean i'm sure i can put together a really scary ass video and use a the most scariest captures that i have and scare the crap out of people 
you know, if I wanted to. Want to make noise out there while I'm in the bathroom and I can't do anything? Oh, well, I gotta tell you, I, I, your, your documentary on Banga is absolutely incredible, Ken. Your documentary on what? I'm sorry. Oh, on Banga, the one you just the last video. Oh, Bangor. Video. Okay, yeah. Bangor, yeah, I, yeah. But sorry, it's my old accent. That is an incredible, well, really well put together documentary. I gotta, I gotta tell you, Ken, it's absolutely amazing. Thanks. Yeah, that was. That, that, it, that is, is honestly, is, is. It's, it's excellent. It's, it's captivating. So, yeah. You know what's funny about that? It's like documentaries like that, really, I mean, people aren't really into those. Um, it's been up going on three weeks soon, and it's only like at 15,000 views, whereas the last one's at 45,000 views. And, you know, there's some special documentaries I put together that people aren't really big on them. You know, but I don't put these together. Like I said, it's not about the numbers. Yeah, it's about educational. Fun. To me, I felt like I really put my heart into the Ghost of Bangor, the mm -hmm. haunted history. I put my heart into that one. And in my opinion, you know, people have different opinions about some of these captures and stuff, but I would say the most amazing capture that I can say to this date that I have ever captured was at the chi children's orphanage in Bangor where those children were talking and singing. I mean, to, in my opinion, that was the most, I would rather capture stuff like that any day than, than, I mean, I don't care if a shadow apparition wants to dance in front of me on the table singing a song. I mean, I would rather catch something like what was captured at that, the old children's orphanage. I mean, to me, that was amazing. Yeah. And when I was there, I knew something was going on. I mean, I felt, I heard the ringing in my ears, which is a telltale sign something's up. I heard the yeah. voice in my ear that said, hey, and my, my equilibrium completely went off. And I kept hearing these static sounds outside. There were children on the playground playing, like maybe five children, you know, but what I was hearing wasn't them. It was something else, but it was like in the form of a static of like multiple children, like a whole sea of children. And I'm like, I, I can't wait to go back and view this recording. And I was disappointed when I listened to it because I'm thinking, well, I hear that sound, but it's not, the recording didn't pick up what I heard. Hasn't so got I'm the like, energy okay, behind it. Let me, go, I'm going to go ahead and digitally enhance it. So I digitally enhanced it. I'm like, okay, I can sort of hear it. So I had to slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, and slow it down until I could hear what they were saying. That's when you know these captures are very real. When you have to slow your recording down 150 to 200 percent to hear them in our time, that's that's when you know this is this is no doubt real. I mean, that's when you know these spirits are real. You know, and I've learned that they are not in the same time realm as we're in. No. In fact, you know, yeah. our time is much slower to the to their time their time is you know it seems like it moves pretty fast and it's probably not even a time realm to them it's just existence <laughs>
So I have learned that the majority of spirit encounters happen so fast, like the shadow apparitions that move in this house. It, it could move so fast that if you blink, you missed it. And that's when I started questioning, okay, if these apparitions and mists and everything move that fast, I mean, are, are they not in our time realm that we're in? I mean, are they moving so quick that if we slow this down, will we be able to hear what they have to say? And that's when I started slowing everything down, digitally enhancing it, and that's when I started hearing them a lot more. Yeah. And Dave, who's a, um, a veteran paranormal investigator, when he came to the house here to investigate with me, he trained me on the equipment to digitally enhance them, to slow them down. He trained me on it because he was listening to these videos, the Ghost of Karma main videos, and he said, Kit, you're missing a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I don't. You know, I'm not, I don't know how to, you know, what to do with it. I mean, I don't have equipment. I don't have uh, what it takes to hear these the way you hear them. And that's when he donated all the equipment. You know, he gave it to me, which I really highly appreciate him for that. And he, and he came up here all the way from Massachusetts to train me on how to use it. So that really changed a lot on doing these investigations because now I'm able to hear them, they're EVPs. And what's really strange is even the spirit box session, I was missing so much because they were talking so fast that I had to slow it way, 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 way down to hear what they're actually saying. Now, I, you know, a lot of our investigations involves the spirit box and the messages we've had. And we've had predictions. We've had, you know, different things that have, uh, uh, like we had when uh, the Kilauea explosion in Hawaii. It predicted it the day before. And a lot of the time we found is, I found the same thing. And a lot of people don't do that. We had someone on the show la um, last Wednesday um so by the time this goes out it'll be a couple of weeks ago but we had him on the show and he was showing um uh things he'd, he'd done by taking taking uh doing visual itc and he oh. was doing normal having normal communication and he, and he you know I, I i think it's because of my eyesight that i can hear things a little bit better but right. ever since i've gone through the footage ever since 2013 i've always thought to slow it down because you know how many times has someone spoke to you in the room and sometimes they speak so fast you don't quite catch what they say? Right. You know, it's, right. The same thing, it's the same thing there. It's like people don't look at patterns of speech. If I'm having a conversation with you and I'm limited as to what I can say or in a sense that I've got to slow down and think about what I'm saying, what I would say, the, the, the first response you would hear and the next response, they might relate to each other. So it's like you know, they'll have one sentence and the next sentence might relate to the sentence that come before it. And that when, when we f first started going through it, we were finding a lot of our messages weren't making sense. And right. the reason was because we were missing so much um, that was coming through either an EVP or, or through the spirit box, as you say. Right. So, yeah, abs I absolutely agree with that. And I, 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 I can understand that. I, I can, you know, that resonates with me then. Yeah, it. There, there are times you can hear them in real time, and they're, they're, they're what they say is normal, and I believe that they're closer into our realm when that happens. But if you notice those faint EVPs that you capture, they're very faint. In fact, on the raw recording, you can't even hear them. Yeah, yeah. You do hear a slight strange sound. And that's when I go over these recordings. Okay, there's a slight strange sound right there. You know, let me digitally enhance that and slow that down to make sure that it wasn't an EVP. Nine times out of ten, it was an EVP. It was a spirit yeah. talking. And that finally answered because for the longest time, I talked about strange sounds that you hear. And my granddaughter explained it. So yeah, Papa, it's like a buzzing sound in your ear. 
Yeah. You know, and we didn't know those are spirits talking. You yeah. know, and like I said, this is a learning process. I mean, Absolutely. I'm learning as I go. And, and if you look back at a lot of paranormal shows, they don't slow stuff down. I don't think they understand that there's a lot more going on than what they're capturing. Yeah. You know, or what they're pointing out because they may be capturing a lot of activity and they don't even realize it. Um, and people ask me, well, what kind of special programs do you use or software? I, I don't use any program, software, apps, or nothing. Everything is raw. And the way I slow these down my way, the way I do it, this right here, I'm eight, this is my digital recorder. I can also download a whole video into this. I can download a video. It'll play the video back out of this. But what I do is transfer everything through the digital into the SD card right there. I pull the SD card out. Mm. I have to re-download it, and it's digitally enhanced. Um, this device here, and I know no, you probably don't even know what that is. This is a high, I mean, this thing magnifies, I mean, it's like 10 times digitally enhances everything. All right. And, you know, I put the recordings through that. It goes through that back into the, um, you know, it downloads it digitally enhanced. And that changed everything because the thing is, EVPs are on a certain frequency. Yeah. in a certain uh, hertz level. I mean, you know, um, that's why we can't help hear them because the hertz is so low, our human ears can't pick it up. But they are on a frequency, a specific frequency mm -hmm. that they use. And we have to keep matching their frequencies in order to hear what they're saying. And we have to keep slowing it down until we get right on their level to understand what they're saying. And, and there's people that said, well, when you when you show these videos, you say there's an EVP there. Well, I didn't hear anything, you know, and I said, well, that's why I had to digitally enhance it and slow it down. But I keep the raw video on there for people. If they want to check it out to see if it's real or not, the raw video is there. I mean, they can go through the process of digitally enhancing it and slowing it down themselves, yeah. you know, to see how real it is. Um, you know, there's just... There's no way in hell you can fake this stuff. There's just no way. You know, it, it, uh, you know, if somebody did fake something like this, it'd be a waste of time. Not yeah. unless they were in it for big, 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 big money. And yeah. like I said, my YouTube channel, I don't. I, it's not monetized. I'm not in it for the money. Yeah. You know, so I'm not going to go through all this crap of faking something. You know, for what? I mean, what's the motive? What, what, you know, this is real paranormal activity. Yeah. What you see in the videos is absolutely real. And if yeah. people don't want to believe it, that's fine. Yeah. Well. Well. Anyway, that EVP said, I hate you. And I'm thinking about going ahead and doing some more um, screenshots on me to show people that that's not, that's not me doing the EVP sound. Oh, my! Well, that, 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 that's the thing. I mean, as fast, like I said, as fascinating as the evidence you capture, the part for me that was most intriguing was yourself, Kent. That's why I asked you on the show. To get your side of the story, you, 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 your investigation and the way you investigate was more intriguing to me than what you were capturing because it's you that's allowing it to be captured. Yeah. And you know, it's your person. It's you. It's, it's your. It's your. It's the way you conducted yourself through this. And you know, it it just gives it. You know what? Just what you said to me and Charlotte today in this is just added. It's just added more validity to it. Mm, right. Absolutely. You know, yeah. It's just giving him more truth. I mean, I, I believed it anyway. And, and and since I've spoke to you, I believe it 
it more than I believed in it. Yeah, really. absolutely. You can you can tell. You can tell. Yeah. Just on the you way know. you're talking about this, you're not. You, you know, we we've talked to many investigators. You're not bigging it up. You're not, you know, trying to make it sound more than it is. Which, if that was at all possible, with half the the stuff you've actually captured. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not you're not sort of going look at me. You know, look what I've captured. It, does, it, ain't I great? You're not. You really, yeah. you know, you come across really humbled by it. If I recall, we were talking about people that that claim this is all demonic. Yeah. And there's no such things as humanoid spirits. And when I got involved with this, now ghosts, spirits, is something that I've never studied out of the Bible. And since there's a lot of people involved with different religions that have opinions about the paranormal, I can only go to the Bible, which which is full of spiritual type things. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, even in the Old Testament, it talks about the medium that contacted Samuel and talked to Samuel to give Saul a message. I mean, so we know that mediums do exist we know that the dead has been contacted it's even written in the scriptures well some people say well that was a demon you know i mean that wasn't samuel no it wasn't a demon it was samuel you know yeah. i mean they just they don't read the full scriptures but i had to satisfy in my mind to satisfy because i'm thinking okay are is there humanoid spirits do they exist? And I started doing some studies into it, and what I found was pretty interesting. First of all, I started off with when Jesus died and went to the core of the earth for three days, it says that he took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. All right. What does that mean? You know, people say, well, he made a way where you don't have to go to hell and, you know, you're going to escape death and you can have eternal life. Yes, I agree with that. But there's something they missed. Mm. When Jesus died, the Bible says there is a great earthquake. The skies turned dark. There was a great earthquake. The graves were opened up and the dead saints came out walking. You know, and I'm like, whoa, why didn't I ever see that before? Mm. You know, th there was a resurrection, you know, where the dead came out walking. I mean, it does say the graves were open and the dead came out walking. So what does that mean when he took the keys to death, hell, and the grave? And it also says that bell was rent in two. That was... The bell that was, um, you know, basically set up for the Ark of the Ark of the Covenant for an atonement of sins, you know, that bell was rip, ripped in two, and something happened when Jesus died. Something changed everything. People talk about a great awakening in the last days. You know, they say, "Oh, yeah, that's going to be a great awakening that takes." I personally believe that that's talking about the spirit realms the dead that there is a great awakening and they say well that's in the last days well we've been in the last days for 2000 years this is what that means is we are in our last time period this is the last um covenant you know that god gave man you know but when jesus died that changed everything you know, and when those graves opened up and the dead saints came out walking, I believe that every that when that happened, and when he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, something opened up in the spirit realms. Realms. You know, there's some religious groups that say, well, when you die, you go to sleep. You know, nothing, no more, and blah 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 blah. You know, the Bible does say that. I saw those scriptures. I know what it's talking about. It's talking about when we die, we know nothing about this life anymore. That's all come to an end. What we were is gone. All right. 
on this earth, in this time frame, in this mm -hmm. realm that we're in, that's, that's done. Mm. All right. So, but our spirit moves on into a different realm. You know, when we die, we're finished with this realm, this realm that we're in in life and our spirit moves on into a different realm, you know, and I think that, oh, I don't think I know the realm that we go into has everything to do with what kind of life we lived. Mm. If I had a really evil heart and went out and committed murder and just viciously evil, all right, and I just committed a murder and I'm walking down the street and somebody comes up and blows, you know, shoots me in the back of my head and I drop dead, you know, I died with an evil heart. I died with an evil spirit, all right, and... There is no way that humanoid spirit's going to go into a realm of peace. It's just not going to happen. No. That spirit is going to go straight to a dark realm. And these spirits here at the Lamb House and that portal have talked about the dark realm. It's dark. It's cold. They say they're trapped. They're begging to be released. They want out. And when you go back and study the Bible, and this is the thing. This paranormal activity confirms the Bible, and the Bible confirms the paranormal activity. Because even Jesus talked about, you know, people being cast into outer darkness. You know, mm -hmm. that is a dark realm. Now, people will say, well, I thought when you die, you go to hell or heaven. Well, you know what? Hell hasn't been created yet. The lake of fire hasn't been created. Neither has heaven. You know, because Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you. And when I finish preparing a place for you, I will come back and get you. Which means heaven is not completed yet. And the lake of fire is not going to be created until after the day of judgment. After all souls are judged, then God uh, destroys the earth. I mean, it's like a big ball of flame, which is referred to as a lake of fire. And everyone that, you know, whatever, that they're cast into the lake of fire. You know, I don't want to... I don't like getting too deep into religious topics, but I think you see my point. Yeah, yeah. So when somebody dies, they're not going directly to a place of burning flames. You know, that's not where they're going. That's not going to happen until everything comes to an end. All souls are brought before a day of judgment, and then that will be the final. That, that'll be the end. And that's why the Bible calls it the second death. You know, those that are judged and cast into the lake of fire is the second death. So, as a religious standpoint, biblically speaking, when people come to me and say, well, you know, this is all demonic related. I mean, you can't talk to humanoid spirits. Well, yes, you can. Mm. All right? Yeah. You can hear from them. It does exist. And that's what really caught my interest to investigate the afterlife. All right, to get an understanding. All right. Of what this is all about. Now, we will never fully 100% understand it until the day we're there ourselves. Yeah. You know, because it's even like Paul said, we look through a glass darkly, you know, talking about the other side. I mean, we don't fully understand, we don't fully comprehend, and we can't fully see what's in stored on the other side and i don't think anybody has all the answers if they no. claim that they know everything that they have it all figured out i'm like well bs nobody has all the answers which means that some people's opinions might be right some of them might be a little off the wall but you know that's why i've listened to people's opinions but it was more important for me to listen to what these spirits say. And they are there. And I said this earlier, but they're there. I mean, if we yeah. want to understand what's going on on the other side, we need to listen to them. Okay. Not to necessarily believe 100% everything they say because you do encounter dark type spirits that will come as a light that will present itself as pleasurable, it will present itself as, you know, what seems right. Mm. But you have to be careful that you don't get deceived. Um, 
you know, that's why there's this lines I do not cross. I mean, doing these investigations, you know, you have to be really, really, really careful and be careful not to claim certain things based on what all these spirits say until you get confirmation that what they're saying is fact. And that's why in these videos, that's why this slam house has been a long term investigation is because I haven't jumped to conclusions Yeah. and saying, okay, this, I, I did in the beginning, I made the mistakes by saying, okay, yeah, this is it because, you know, but then these spirits ta- showed me something different. I'm like, okay, okay, I do not need to make claims until I have confirmation. I, I, I can't come out and claim something until I'm 100% convinced that what I'm claiming is fact. A lot of people on, on the Rachel, Edmund killed Rachel situation, these spirits say that. These spirits have said that uh, Edmund uh, murdered Rachel. When I asked Edmund, Edmund says, yes, I killed Rachel, help me. When I asked Rachel, she confirms it. Mm. All right? That's based on the paranormal evidence. But I have to be really, really careful and not come out and make claims to everybody that, hey, yes, Edmund Lamb here in Carmel, Maine, the undertaker murdered Rachel. You don't ever hear me claim that in the videos. None of them. I don't claim it. I investigate it, and I search for confirmation. And until I get 100% confirmation, I can't come out and say it's a fact that Edmund Lamb murdered Rachel. Do I believe he did? Well, if these spirits are telling the truth, yes. But can I prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he did? No. I need physical evidence, and it's almost ne- nearly impossible to get physical evidence from something that happened way over 100 years ago. Yeah. Now, Naomi Mitchell, I don't know how much you guys watch those videos, but Naomi Mitchell, who was murdered in 1912 here in Carmel, um, Jay Sherman Gray was arrested for her murder. He died in prison. And when I first started these investigations, you know, I kept wondering, well, who this who's this female spirit that I keep hearing from, you know, a younger female spirit that sounds like she's in her teens. And, you know, I did some research and I found out that there was a 14 year old girl murdered here in Carmel in 1912. She was raped and her throat was slit. And (laughs) so I went out to Fuller Road close to where her body was found. And I take the spirit box with me and you know, I'm going out there, and I'm like, yeah, is, is Naomi here? And the first thing I capture is a male voice that says, I didn't do it. Butch did it. That opened up an investigation in the Naomi Mitchell murder. And I did a deep investigation in, into her murder. And I can come out and 100% say, based on the evidence and the facts in the case, Jay Sherman Gray did not murder Naomi Mitchell. Um, Na- Naomi Mitchell. It was a Butch Powell that murdered her. Not only did I get multiple confirmations from multiple spirits <laughs> on this, but I even encountered this the guy. The he's now a spirit that murdered her. He claimed that he murdered her, and he said exactly what he did to her, and it was the truth. I mean, what he did to her actually did happen. He even said he cut her breast off, and her breast was cut off. That's not in the newspapers, all right? I wouldn't have never known that, but somebody did confirm to me, yes, her breasts were cut off, and that spirit said, I cut her breasts off. That confirmed it, and I studied, and remember I told you I was involved with investigations. I did intel work getting down to the bottom of, of certain criminal acts, all right? So I have some training in not only in psychology, but the study of behavior of humans. Mm -hmm. And when I did the investigation in the Naomi Mitchell, I find out that Jay Sherman Gray was actually mentally challenged. All right. Basically, he was retarded. And I had no doubt that this murder was pinned on him. And 
what actually that the, the real murder of Naomi Mitchell is pretty much swept under the rug. Um, when police captured Jay Sherman Gray, there was no blood on his clothing. He denied it, but after he was in their their nice care for 24 hours, after that is when he confessed to it. You know what happened. All right, yeah. he was he was pushed into a confession of it. They yeah. they wanted somebody to take the fall for this, and that was Jay Sherman Gray. And what confirmed it even more, and this was way after I did the investigation, some descendants of Naomi Mitchell uh, did contact me, and they did say that the family did not believe Jay Sherman Gray murdered Naomi, and they believe there is a cover-up. So that's enough evidence to me to stand 100% firm. Jay Sherman Gray did not murder Naomi. But it all started out with paranormal encounters that even opened up the door of that investigation. It's what these spirits said. And that's a good example why we really need to listen closely. When we do investigations, we need to listen closely to what these spirits say. And we can't interpret and decide what they're talking about in one investigation. It takes multiple investigations, multiple confirmations. Some people get annoyed. Oh, he asks the same questions all the time. Well, yeah, I want confirmation. I ask these questions and I repeat them to see if another spirit has something to say about it. Edmund, who did you murder? Edmund, how many people did you murder while you were alive? How many people did you kill? How many people did you kill? Edmund, did you kill Anna? Can you tell me your name? What do you have to do with Edmund? What do you have to do with Edmund? Okay, getting off subject here, you guys keep saying you need help. What do you need help with? The Naomi, Naomi Mitchell investigation and the Rachel investigation was probably the most long-term amazing Can I ask a question? I've ever been involved in. Yeah, go ahead. You said Jay Sherman Gray was 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 uh, mentally challenged, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Could he be shadow dude? I don't, I don't think so because uh, Jay Sherman Gray uh, communicated with me. Right. Um, okay. And Jay Sherman Gray was a pretty big guy. Um, shadow dude is pretty short. He's very small. Uh, but you know what? This, this this investigation went a lot further, Naomi and Rachel. And by the way, Rachel and Naomi are sisters. Um, Jesus. You know, there when these spirits kept telling me Rachel, Edmund killed Rachel, Edmund killed Rachel, finally I said, well, Rachel, what's your last name? And she said, Mitchell. And I'm like, what? 
and I already did the Naomi investigation. And yeah. so I just point blank asked, and I got Mitchell confirmed like four or five times. And I point blank asked Naomi and Rachel, are you guys sisters? And both times they confirm it. I went online and went to Ancestry.com, you know, because I didn't know much about, you know, searching stuff online because I'm not a big, I've, I've never been in uh, on the internet much but i've gone on to it the last three years quite a bit but um so i did a search and yes there was a rachel mitchell born in 1892 i believe it was um that and her death date's unknown her burial's unknown there's no more information out after that but she was naomi mitchell's sister now since then somebody went online and changed that date that she was born in 1912. Somebody changed that after Ghost of Carmel, Maine, and then they created a web page saying that, oh, Kent's lying, it wasn't Naomi, I mean, Rachel Mitchell, look, she was born in 1912. Anybody can go on there and change that information, I found out, because, you know, I asked about it, and they said, no, it's, people can go on there and change that information. But I took screenshots of what was put there by the family, and I finally came across a descendant of the Mitchells that confirmed there was in fact a Rachel Mitchell and she did die in Carmel as an adult, the village of Carmel and the lamb house is in the village of Carmel. So he has records that there was a Rachel Mitchell who died as an adult. And I also have people that have information that one of the Mitchell sisters committed suicide because she was pregnant out of wedlock and she was so humiliated that she committed suicide. Well, when you study the rape, the Mitchell sisters, the only one that died outside of Naomi was Rachel. So it all comes together. Now, where this gets really strange, if you haven't watched all the videos, I find out that my grandson is also a Mitchell descendant. Oh. My grandson, who's in this house right now, is a distant cousin to Rachel and Naomi. His great 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 grandmother was Naomi J. Mitchell, Rachel and Naomi's aunt. Well, uh... And I never knew that till way after I finished those investigations is when I found out. In fact, I was doing an Irish road investigation of a lady that died in a in a car. A boat went through the windshield and killed her, and she was a descendant of the Mitchells. And that's how I found out that my grandson is a descendant of the Mitchells. His, um, my daughter married, um, you know, Cody, who's a descendant of the Mitchells. So I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And what's really strange, when the lady tapped on my hip and said, help me, Kent, which I know for a fact was Rachel. That happened around the same time my grandson and my daughter moved into this house. And even more strange, that happened on July 24th, and Naomi Mitchell was murdered on July 24th. So Everything so, interconnects. Everything yeah, interconnects. It's like closing a circle or closing like a loop then. In a se- yes. As if you were like closing a circle or a loop. Everything interconnects. And... And... And I learned all this because... Because... I didn't want to necessarily make Ghost of Carmel, Maine about all these spectacular captures. I learned all of this is because I wanted to study the paranormal and what these spirits say. Because if we listen closely, if we piece together little by little what they're telling us, it's an amazing journey. Yeah. It's an amazing journey. And that's what Ghost of Carmel, means about. It's an amazing journey Ooh, that amazing. these spirits have things to talk about. They have things to tell. And we have to listen to them. Now, don't get me wrong. It's cool running into, you know, a- apparitions. It's, you know, it's 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 really nice when you capture uh, things on video that validates this paranormal activity. I mean, that's, don't get me wrong. I mean, that's really good. But that's not what it has to be about. I mean, 
it has to be about what they say. That's that's key right there. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And you know, before this happened, I mean, I was never, I was never into the paranormal. I mean, you like, don't get me wrong, I like a good scary ghost show, you know, uh, yeah. you know. But as far as, you know, I guess Ghost Adventures have been around for a while. I've watched a couple of them, and I'm like, eh, you know, it's just not my thing. You know, uh, I, I think they did a lot of good history that was interesting, the exploration, but. As far as the paranormal part, I just wasn't into it, you know, so I wasn't my sh kind of show to watch. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a lot of people to this day ask me, oh, have you heard of such and such? I'm like, no. And they go, oh, you don't know who such and such is? No. Well, I thought you'd know who they are. They're big paranormal investigators. I'm like, well, I'm, I, you know, I'm not really into it. I mean, seriously, I'm not into it. If I wanted to be a celeb... <laughs> If I wanted to be a celebrity, I, I, a celebrity, I took up acting school and play guitar or something. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. And I don't ever contact people either. I mean, if yeah. like you guys had to contact me, I mean, I don't go around contacting TV. The Travel Channel contacted me. I didn't contact them. They wanted to know if they can use some of my footage. I go, yeah, I mean, that's fine. You know, so you know a radio broadcaster contacted me i mean people contact me because they want me to be doing whatever and i, I don't go around con i never contacted nukes top five never yeah. sent him a video never even heard of him until you know he sent me a message and you know and we chat and he asked me permission to use some of my footage i go yeah no problem use whatever you want yeah, I didn't even know if he was a debunker or, you know, whatever. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't even care if debunkers want to use the footage. Just no. don't doctor it and lie, which yeah. I caught one person doing. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you want to use it, go for it. If you think you can debunk it, go for it. You know, I don't care. I mean, that's the, the footage is there for people to study or whatever. I mean, you know, I don't have a problem with anybody using it, but... I don't want them using it for money reasons to to, yeah. to gain money off of it. I mean, I don't even do that. And if I'm not doing that, nobody else can. Once again, we cannot thank Kent enough for giving his time and coming on our show. His stories, his evidence, and his ethics in the approach to the paranormal are absolutely brilliant. What Kent has shared with us in the hours that we spoke to him was just a small sample of some of the things he has been through over the last few years. So I implore you guys, please check out his channel, Ghosts of Carmel, Maine. You will not be disappointed. Thank you guys once again for watching. And thank you to everyone who has commented on part one. We will see you all in 2021. Take care of yourselves. Love and light.